Hello, my name is Winter, and this is the first of a two-part video series about the basic operations of addition, multiplication, exponentiation, and so on. These operations are in a series known as the hyper operations, which sounds scary, but it's really just the basic operations we know, and then many more. In this video, I will show you how to find the next operation in the series, and I will show you how they are all related. In the second part, I will use the knowledge we've learned in this video to tackle the question of what comes before addition in this series. Before we get too far into this, I would like to note that we are only going to be looking at how these operations interact with numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, so the non-negative integers. We're not going to be looking at any negative numbers or complex numbers for this video. Now I want to make clear some notation I will be using for this video. This is pretty common notation when working with the hyper operations. Because we'll be working with operations higher up in the series that we don't generally have symbols or well-known names for, it's good to have a notation that shows you where they are on the series. So we will be using this bracket, square bracket, and number notation. So plus is the first operation in our series, so it will be denoted by square brackets with a 1 inside. Similarly, multiplication will be shown with a square bracket with a 2 inside, and so on. So basically I'm going to be using these square brackets and these operations interchangeably. Let us start with addition, the first hyper operation. So I think most of us are pretty familiar with addition. As we can see in this equation, 1 plus 2 equals 1, square bracket 1, of 2 equals 3. I think everyone knows that 1 plus 2 is 3, but how do we arrive at this result? One way of visualizing addition is by using a number line. Starting at our first number, 1, on the number line, we add by 1 each time for this number of the second number. So 1 plus 1 plus 2. And then we arrive at 3. We can add together any two numbers. 4 plus 4 plus is 8. And we can even add multiple times. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 can be simplified down to 16. But as we get into larger equations adding more and more numbers, especially if they're of the same number, 4 plus 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 4, yeah, it's such a long sentence to write something that feels like we could write it in a more succinct way, and in fact we can, and that's in fact how we can create multiplication. With this equation, we are adding four nines together, so we can say it's equal to 4, because that's the number we're adding, times the number of fours, which, of which there are nine. So this can be also be written as four times nine, or four square bracket two nine. It's a much faster way of writing it. This is why sometimes multiplication is described as quick addition. Now that we have an idea of what multiplication is, let's try to put it into a formula. We saw that when we add four to itself nine times, we could rewrite it as four times nine. So let's just make the rule that any number a times any other number b is the, is the same as adding a to itself b times. Now I've written down some equations here involving only the variable a based off of this equation. So a times 1 is a, which is a little unclear at first, but I think it makes sense. 8 times 2 is a plus a, 8 times 3 is a plus a plus a. Let's take two consecutive equations, a times 3 and a times 4. Because a plus a plus a is the same as a times 3, we can rewrite this equation as a times 4 equals a plus a times 3. How about we try something similar for the other equations? As you can see, we can continue doing the same sort of thing up through a times 3 equaling a plus a times 2, a times 2 equals equaling a times plus a times 1, but it becomes less obvious here. So how about we just make this a rule? that a times 1 is always a. So, from this we can find an equation involving a and b, replacing the second number with b. a times b is a, as we've seen in all these equations, plus a, in parentheses, times 1 less than b. So here it went from 2 to 1, here it went from 3 to 2, here it went from 4 to 3. So, a times b is a, plus a times b minus 1. Or, we could write it the other way with it plus a at the end. It doesn't really matter. Where, keep in mind, a times 1 is always a. 
Now we have a much cleaner definition of multiplication. So now that we've created multiplication, we run into a similar situation. We can multiply the same number multiple times. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 seems awful repetitive, and even more so, 4 times 4 times 4 times uh, so many 4s. Isn't there a better way to write this? Well, yes, we'll just do the same thing as before. We'll create another operation, the next hyper operation in the series. So, once again, we'll define exponentiation as a to the b, a exponentiated with b, as being a times a times a times a times a, b times. But once again, we have an equation with ellipses. So let's see what we did before and try to recreate that with exponentiation. Once again, I've written these four equations, but this time with exponentiation. So a to the 1, a to the 2, a to the 3, a to the 4, equaling a multiplied by itself that many times. So this time we know exactly what to do. It's the same as last time with multiplication. We can sub in the previous equation. So a to the 4th equals a times this, which is a times a to the 3. a to the 3 is a times a to the 2. a to the 2 is a times a to the 1. And a to the 1, let's just define it as a. So, once again, putting in b for the number we're exponentiating it to. Now remember, we're using this notation now. This square bracket of 3, it's just the same as exponentiation. So a, 3b, is a times a, 3b minus 1. And keeping in mind that a, 3, 1 is simply a, we now have a definition of exponentiation. Now that we've done this twice already, you may have an idea of where we're going next. So the next operation, tetration, may not be something that everyone has heard of before, and that's just fine, because we're about to explain it. It is simply the next step. As multiplication was repeated addition, and exponentiation was repeated multiplication, tetration is going to be repeated exponents. So let's look at an example of a repeated exponent. 4 to the 4 comes out to 4 3 4, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, and then that comes out to 256. So with tetration, we could also say that this is 4, square bracket 4, 2, since we are doing exponents with 4 2 times. But now let's look at 4 to the 4 to the 4. 4, 3, 4, 3, 4. But what exactly is this? So if we evaluate the first two 4s first, 4, 3, 4 is 256, as we saw above, we get to 256 to the 4th power. However, if we evaluate the second two fours first, we get 4 to the 256th power. And let me tell you, these are not the same number, not even close. This first number has about 10 digits, the second one has well over 100. So what happened here? Why has this not been a problem before? If we have three numbers we're adding, if we add the second two, it's going to give us the same result as adding the first two. Similarly, the same is true with multiplication. This is called the associative property, and as it turns out, exponentiation does not have the associative property, and that's why this has become a problem now. So then, how do we define tetration? 4, 4, 3 being this or this, evaluating the top first or the bottom first, will decide if we define tetration between any two numbers a and b as evaluating the top first and going down, or evaluating the bottom first and going up. So, is there an obvious reason why we should choose either? The standard is that this first definition, where we evaluate from the top down, is what we call tetration. Now, in reality, there is no real reason to choose one over the other. We weren't doing this for some purpose. We were just exploring what comes after exponentiation in the hyperoperation. So really, this other tetration begins a whole new line of hyperoperations that are slightly different, but still contain the same addition, multiplication, and exponentiation. While the other form of tetration and the other hyperoperations are just as interesting as the formally accepted ones, we're going to continue with what is normally referred to as tetration for now. So, doing what we did before, and now that we know the correct order, a4b is equal to this tower of exponents, or, I think more clearly, equals a3, all of this, evaluating the end first and going back inwards. So, once again, we'll look at these equations, which have proven very useful in the past. 
plugging in the previous equation into these equations in order to find the relation between them. So plugging in B for the number we are titrating to A, we find a similar equation to these two, that A for B is A3 A4 B minus 1, which makes sense as we were relating it to the previous equation. And keeping in mind that A41 is A, this creates our definition of tetration. Now I want to point out that this is not equal to phoneming A at the end. This is related to the issue we just talked about earlier. With the other form of tetration, this would in fact be our equation, and this would be what we're not using. Now that we've completed our definition of tetration, uh, we've crossed all the hurdles we really need to, defining uh, pentation, number five, hexation, number six, and so on forever, is really quite simple. Uh, we have the equations for A2B, multiplication, A3B, exponentiation, A4B, tetration, and um, really they follow the same format. So now we're ready to look at some general properties that are true between all of them. We have an understanding of how we get to the next hyper operation. But what is this process called? Does it have a name? As far as I know, it does not, and if it does, it doesn't have a name interesting enough for me to have remembered. So I came up with my own. We're making the process, the operation faster every time, in a way. So multiplication is fast addition, uh, exponentiation is fast multiplication, and so on. So how about we call it, make it something that means to make faster. A word that means to make faster is to expedite. So let's call this process expedition. We've seen that all the hyperoperation defining equations have a few things in common. Two things. Maybe. They all reference the previous hyperoperation. They all define a any number operated with one as being a itself. So if we plug in w for the smaller operation number and w plus one therefore for the bigger one, we come up with the general formula that applies to all the ones we've seen so far. A w plus one b equals a w, all of a w plus one b minus one, where a w plus one of one is a. And we can plug in any number for w that where w is greater than or equal to one, and this equation will give us something that is true. Now the fact that w has to be greater than or equal to one is important because a w plus one of one is a. We need to note that a plus one is not a. So a square bracket 1 is not a. So therefore, this equation only works when w plus 1 is big greater than or equal to 2, which is guaranteed by w being bigger, greater than or equal to 1, which is what we have here. Now there's one more property I want to highlight that applies to all the hyperoperations we've seen. This equation that we found doesn't really give us a good idea of the basic repetition property that we see in 3 plus 3 equals 3 times 2, 3 plus 3 equals 3 to the 2, and so on. If we do the same one operation with two of the same number, it's just the higher operation with a 2 applying to the first number. So we can pretty easily make that into equation applying to any hyperoperation w. a w a equals a w plus 1, the higher up operation, of 2. And of course, we need to say w is greater than or equal to 1, because we haven't looked at the case for low one yet, which we will do next time. And now that we've derived these main three properties of the hyper operations, we are prepared to tackle the question next time of what comes before addition in the hyper operations? Why is operation zero? Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.